everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love. Revival love. Supernatural love. Jesus is love. Love. Are you a woman watching this program today? Because if so, you are in for a real treat. This is an hour that God is pouring out his spirit, of course, upon all flesh but especially upon women. And I'm going to be sharing with you some prophetic insights and some impartation before the end of this program. You're going to be prophesied right into your place. So I want to share, first of all, about a uh, experience I had actually on June 26, 2015. It was on my birthday, so that's how I remember it. And I was in a worship service getting ready to minister when the Lord spoke very, very clearly to me. And he said, I want you to start a global network for women in ministry and I want you to redefine ministry and it was such a clear word that my spirit leapt on the inside of me you know normally when I get uh, you know an assignment from the Lord that I know is going to take a lot of work and that I kind of like oh really Lord is that really you I want to weigh it up make sure I heard right you know and say you know are you absolutely sure you need me to do that Lord because the schedule is already so busy and I have those kind of questions just to make sure. But this time it wasn't like that. I just, I just had this leap within my spirit, this absolute joy. And I said, an immediate yes. Well, from there, I took it to our advisors and, and to our team at home. And it was a big yes on everyone's part. And so we launched Women in Ministry Network at Rosh Hashanah, September 2015. And it's just been a glorious encounter. And in that, God has asked me to redefine ministry. Now it says in Psalm 68 verse 11 that great is the company of women who proclaim the glad tidings. It was um, about a year or so ago that the Lord gave me a vision and a word, a prophetic word regarding what he was going to do with women in these days. And it was a vision of, of waves coming up upon the shores of continents and the seven mountains of influence. And the waves turned into women. And the Lord spoke to me specifically out of Genesis 1, 27 and 28, where it says, the Lord created man in his image. Male and female created he them. In other words, man or mankind equals male and female. But then in verse 28, it says, and he blessed them. He blessed male and female and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, uh, subdue the earth, replenish it, rule and have dominion. And the Lord spoke to me clearly and he said that there will not be a full manifestation of the dominion and the rule of the kingdom of God until women are in their place. And that there has been an oppression upon women for many, many years. In fact, since the fall. But now is the time for restoration. That's why I say if you're a woman, get excited right now. So I want to share a message with you today about my most favorite woman in the Bible, Deborah. And get ready because there's going to be an impartation on a few levels. God has given me some insights to glean from. So as I give you the insights, I'm also going to be imparting to you. So get into a position where, where you're ready to receive the impartation and turn in your Bibles to Judges chapter 4. In Judges chapter 4, we see that that Israel had been under bondage. They had been oppressed because they had walked away from the Lord. And by the way, any time that you walk away from the Lord or go contrary to his ways, there's going to be a consequence of that. It's like, it's, it's like giving yourself over to darkness will produce darkness, right? And that's what happened to Israel. So they were in this terrible state. They were oppressed and, and they, you know, they were, they were not functioning as they should. And it was in that hour that God raised up a prophetess. Remember that in these days in Judges that the, the, um, the, the judges 
were the ones who enforced the law, but it was the prophets that gave the word of the Lord. And so they didn't have kings yet. So the prophets were a major part of the nation at that time, led the nation with the direct word of the Lord. The prophets were not appointed by man. They were appointed by God. And you see in Judges chapter 4 that God appointed a woman by his choosing named Deborah to be his prophet in that day. So in Judges chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. So Deborah was three things. She was a prophetess, she was a wife, and she was a judge of Israel at that time. So as a prophetess, she carried the word of God for the nation, appointed by God. At the same time, she was also a wife. Her husband's name was Lapidoth, and she was also a judge. So in the two entities or the two positions in that day that God had chosen to govern the nation through the prophets and the judges, she was chosen by God to hold both those positions. And in addition to that, she was a wife of Lapidoth. Now the name Deborah actually means honeybee. And so there are qualities within a honeybee that we can look at that describe the nature of Deborah. You know, honeybees, they make honey. And so are the women of God in this hour. You're going to bring forth the sweet things of the Spirit of God. But also the thing about the honeybee is they work together in unity. And we are going to show you things out of this portion of Scripture where you will see that Deborah led in this camaraderie in the Spirit to bring about the purposes of God. I believe the Lord has shown me prophetically that in this hour, women in particular are going to be anointed and appointed by Him to to bring forth a unity, a camaraderie in the spirit where division walls will come down and will work together for the purpose of God and bringing about his counsel in this day. As you are sitting there, God is anointing you right now to be part of this great company, a company that brings forth love, a company that brings forth unity, a company that brings forth the sweet things of the spirit, the honey of the spirit. That is who you are. That is who he has appointed you to be. That's why he's called me to prophesy this over you right now. So just receive it. Like I said, put yourself in, in a place where you can be imparted to because this whole program is going to be a program of impartation. Now, the next thing that we notice here is that, is that she was a wife of Lapidoth. Now, what, Lapidoth means burning torch. And so Lapidoth, this is the only time that you hear his name in all of Scripture. You hear Deborah's name mentioned many times and a lot written about her, but not much about Lapidoth. We simply know that he was a burning torch, and I believe that he was a burning torch torch for Deborah. You see, in the body, everyone has to be in their place. Deborah was in her place as a prophetess and as a judge because God appointed her into those positions. It wasn't self-appointed. It was God's choosing. But in that choosing, he also chose her husband in his place. He also had a place to serve that was extremely important. He was a burning torch for Deborah. I believe that he was a strong man on the front lines. Oftentimes women will ask me, they will say, you know, what do I do, you know, if my husband doesn't have the same calling? I'm called to preach or I'm called to lead, but my husband, he doesn't feel called in the same way. Well, you know, everyone has to be who God called them to be. I remember when I was a brand new Christian and of course, I was all enthusiastic about the Lord and, and the Lord anointed me with leadership ability and, and with a communication gift right away. And I, I started prophesying early in my Christian walk and was excited about the gifts of the Spirit and, and sharing the revelation of the Word of God. And so uh, people were attracted to that. I was winning souls out on the streets and leading teams. I mean, I was just a natural leader because God made me a leader. My husband on the other side, he's 
wired totally differently for one thing, but um, he wasn't even as spiritually hungry as I was in the beginning. And many women back in that day told me, you know what, Patricia, you're just going to have to hold back a little bit because your husband needs to be the head of this whole thing. And he needs to be the one who is the leader in the things of the spirit. And so just hold back so that your husband can catch up. So you know what that did to me? It made me the pressure queen because I thought in my mind, if my husband doesn't rise up and become a leader and become more enthusiastic in the spirit, and if he doesn't get out there and lead the people and start preaching the word of God and, and evangelizing people, then I am not free to be. So I started pushing him, but he didn't have the same call. He didn't have the same hunger. He didn't have the same drive. And so what he perceived that uh, uh, as was rejection. He felt that I was rejecting him for who he was. And I felt so bad about it. The Lord spoke to me and he said, you are rejecting your husband. I made him to be who he is and he's beautiful the way that I made him to be. And I don't want you to pressure him. I made you who you are and I made him who he is. So I went and repented. I said, Ron, I am so sorry for pressuring you. And I, I just want you to know that I love you just as you are and that you are precious before God. God. And he emerged as this wonderful man of God who loved the Lord and who loved supporting me, encouraging me to this very day. He is still in a support role and loves it. He actually loves being behind the scenes more than out front. If you asked him to come and preach, he would just like, no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't feel called to do that. I don't really like doing that. He likes being more in the background and takes care of things in that way. That's where he thrives because that's where his call is. So in a way, he's my Lapidoth. And there's many of you women out there who have been holding back on your calling because you haven't known how it all works. Love your husband for who he is and where he's at. Everybody grows in the Lord in, in, in different strides, in different ways. Everyone's wired differently. Everyone's called differently. But we are to love and accept each other for who they are and for what their call is. So I just want to encourage you if you are a woman with a strong leadership calling, but your husband is maybe ministry of helps or more of in a supportive role, you be the most loving woman that you can be to your Lapidoth and just cheer him on. You see, Deborah wasn't only a leader. She was a wife, and I believe she was a good one. And we are to be good wives and good mothers as women, but we're also to step into the call that God has for us. Lapidoth was in his place. I believe he was very secure cure as a man of God, knowing that he was a burning torch for God, a burning torch in his day, and a burning torch for Deborah and their family if they had children. So let's read on. It says that Deborah used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the sons of Israel came up to her for judgment. Now, I was just recently in Israel, and we saw date palms everywhere. And so we we're asking our guide who knew a lot about the scripture and did some specific research for us and discovered that Deborah's palm was the date palm. And there's many date palms. They're beautiful. In fact, we're going to show you a picture of one right now where I'm sitting right under. Isn't it beautiful? It's a beautiful palm tree. That's the date palm that Deborah sat under. And in her day, she would sit under the date palm and the men of Israel, the sons of Israel, would come to her for judgment. Did they come to her because she was a woman? No, they came to her because she was a judge. They came to her because she was a prophetess. And that is where she served the Lord. And that day it wasn't in a, in a building, it was under the date palm. Now the palm tree that she sat under stood for uh, righteousness and beauty and grace. And so she judged in that way. So we today are to know that we are to judge righteously in the Lord. In other words, to have righteous discernment. Jesus is our righteousness. And so we are to flourish in that righteousness. We are to flourish in what is right before God because he's given it to us as a gift and we're to let that shine. But also it stands for justice and beauty. And of course the grace that brings it all together. And so as women,
women of God in this day, we're going to be involved to speak words of righteousness, to speak words of justice, especially as you know in our ministry, we're involved with anti-trafficking and that. And so we, um, we speak the words of justice for those who can't cry out for themselves. And we're also in the grace of God, beautifying his gospel and bringing forth this gracious message through gracious vehicles in this day. That is who Deborah was. She sat under the palm tree and brought forth the ministry of the Lord under that palm. What about you? Receive that impartation. Receive that impartation of that you're sitting under the palm of God, the palm tree that is so righteous. You're sitting under his righteous hand. You're sitting un under his justice. You're sitting under his beauty, empowered by his grace. That is how you are going to live your life. Now, in verse 6, it says, She sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinoam and Kadesh, from, from Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Behold, the Lord God of Israel has commanded, Go and march to Mount Tabor and take with you 10,000 men from the sons of Naphtali and from the sons of Zebulun. I will draw out for you Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his many troops to the river Kishon, and I will give him into your hand. Now, what she's doing is, is functioning in the office of the prophet. So she gets the word of the Lord, and the Lord is going to give Israel the victory. So she gives the word to the head of the army. Now, Barak, his name means lightning lightning. He is a powerful man of God. And he was the head of the army of Israel, overseeing thousands of troops. He was a man who was strong. In fact, Barak was such a man of faith that he is listed in the heroes of faith in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, and of course referred to in 12. Okay, so he is listed there in that whole teaching on faith, in that whole company of believers. See, oftentimes you hear in the body of Christ teaching about how Barak was just a weak man. He wanted a woman to go out into battle with him and he was so weak and God was upset with him because he wanted a woman. He wouldn't go into battle without a woman. That's not the picture at all. And I'm going to share with you what the word says about Barak. Deborah was operating as the prophet serving in that office when she brought the word to Barak. That word was for him so that he would know how to lead his troops. And then he said to her in verse 8, Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. She said, surely I will go with you. Nevertheless, the honor shall not be yours on the journey that you are about to take. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. Then, Bar then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Wow, what an amazing picture of this unity and this camaraderie in battle. You see, Deborah was in her place operating as a prophetess, Barak was operating in his place as the commander in chief of the army. So he said, Deborah, if you go into battle with me, I will go with you. I will go into battle if you go into battle with me. Why did he say that? Was it because he just needed, you know, his mummy with him? No, it wasn't like that. It was like this. In those days, only the prophets carried the word of the Lord. And he so admired and respected her calling as the prophet of God that he said, I will not go into this battle without the word of God going into battle with me. He respected the word of God and he respected Deborah. He was not a weak leader. You don't become the, the captain of the army of Israel by being a weak man. He was a skilled warrior. He was a, a, a skilled, skilled general. He was a commander of the army, but he knew where his gift was to operate and where hers was to operate. So he said, I will go with you if you go because I want the fresh word of the Lord, the now word of the Lord. I want to be instructed by the word of the Lord and whatever he says, I will do it. So Deborah then, she submits to Barak's desire 
And you see this mutual submission here. It's beautiful. So Deborah submits and says, I will go with you. Then she starts to prophesy again. She says, but the honor will not be yours in the battle. He didn't care who the honor belonged to. That wasn't the point. She said, the honor will not be yours. It will be a woman. God is going to sell Sisera into the hands of a woman. Now, what was she doing there? She was simply prophesying how the battle was going to go so that he would know. Barak was a confident man. If he was insecure, he would have said, hey, just hold it. I mean, if it's going to be a woman getting the, the glory, forget it. I'll just go myself. But he wasn't insecure. He didn't care if a donkey got the glory. He just wanted God to get the honor. He wanted God to get the glory. Whoever God chose, that was fine with him. He was such a righteous man, a man of valor, a man of strength. And I prophesy over you today that many of you as women are going to be working side by side with men, respecting and honoring their positions of expertise and authority, and you will submit to them and they will submit to you. And together there will be this beautiful camaraderie that will win the battles of the Lord. And so the Lord is preparing you for that right now. So he said, if you go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So away he went. Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And so there they are going into battle together. Now, when they get out into battle, you see that, that Deborah then says at a particular time in battle, they're out there together. She's waiting on the Lord. He's waiting on the word of the Lord to come. They're both in their place. And so are the armies that they're taking with them. So Deborah says, I've got the word of the Lord. This is in verse 14. Deborah said to Barak, arise, for this is the day in which the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Behold, the Lord has gone out before you. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. Now, you know how this, this ends, okay? He follows Deborah's instruction perfectly because that's why he had her in battle. And he goes and overthrows the army. He did exactly what God told him to do. And God gave him the victory. But Sisera, he fled. So because he had had the word of the Lord, he knew God was giving Sisera into his hands and he knew it was going to be given into the hands of a woman. So he knew exactly how to follow through. He didn't go home and say, oh, okay, I'll have a cup of tea now. The battle's over. No, he followed through in his assignment to make sure Sisera was taken down by the woman. Well, now you see something else that happens. Sisera goes to his friend's house and his friend has a wife named Jael. Now, she's a part of this equation, too. She's got a different anointing than Deborah, and she's got a different anointing than uh, Barak. She's got the tent peg anointing, and she's faithfully ser serving at home on the home front. She's got, you know, the home front anointing. And then she takes her tent peg, and when Sisera was asleep, she uh, nails him, okay? So now he is gone, and the battle is won. So Barak comes and sees that it's finished. He's finished his assignment. Deborah has done her part. Jael has done her part. And then you see in Judges chapter 5, they sing this song together about the victory of the Lord. God is redefining ministry in this day. So often we see, you know, people saying, well, you know, um, you've got to be a preacher behind a pulpit to be in ministry. But, you know, Deborah as a wife on the home front, was as important as her role as a prophetess. Barack in the military was as important as Deborah's. JL was important with her tent peg anointing. Are you in your right place? Do you know who you are? Because you are so special and whatever you're carrying, you're gonna carry it for Jesus whether you're in the background or on the home front or in the workplace, wherever you are at, you can exude the glory of God. And God is redefining ministry in this hour. I want to impart to you an empowerment from the Lord this very day that you would rise up just like Deborah, 
arose as a mother in Israel. You need to arise in your day. This is your hour to shine for Jesus in whatever place he's called you to be. And I want to encourage you to join Women in Ministry Network, where we will cover and encourage and bring equipping and empowering, mobilizing efforts. You know, you can go on womenonthefrontlines.com and get more information about the network. Women from all over the world and from every walk of life and ministry are joining the network because God is raising up this great company of women who are proclaiming glad tidings. You are in that company. You are being called by God in this hour to be raised up in him and for his glory. The world needs you to bring light into the darkness and you have a specific assignment to do that. So just, just open your heart right now as I pray a blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release your blessing over your women in this hour and over any men that are watching that you would empower them to, to bring them into their place and that you would cause them to arise for such a time as this. God bless you. We'll see you next time. And remember this, God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. Francis' powerful CD teaching from Disgrace to Grace will help you discover your kingdom calling and purpose. Order now and we'll also send you Patricia King and Mary Audrey's timeless message, Women of Christ Arise. Ignite your spirit. Find your destiny. Order today for only $20 plus shipping. Call 866-980-5464. Mention television offer 322. Go online to patriciaking.com or text BLESS to 42828. Order now. This is Clarice. Clarice lives in the frozen tundra of Antarctica, which leaves Clarice lacking a church community. So she logs on to XP Web Church, where she can connect with a vibrant church community anytime, anywhere. Join now at xpwebchurch.com. And so, Lord, I release your glory on my new friend. <laughs> 